Hi, everyone. We are about 45 minutes late to recording because we did our thing where we rabbit holed into silly dialogue. And uh, so here we are. The words existential crisis were said multiple times in a very (laughs) unironic tone. Like we were having a a chat. We've had a bit bit of dread over here lately, but uh, we're we're bouncing back a little bit. The angst is real. I have poured my wine. I texted Blaze because we ordered Indian food. And I said... When the non gets here, can you bring it up? Because I haven't eaten since like one o'clock and it's 645 and I just opened a bottle oh of wine. God. Yeah, not the smoothest thing I've ever done, but I was like, I still that want my it's, wine. It's going to be a very silly, silly <laughs> time with Christine <laughs> this time. week. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, How, besides your existential crisis, why do you drink this week, Amethy? Um, Why do I drink? Um, uh, Well, I have... I'm very close to the troll hole being done. Like so close. I am ang- ants. I'm antsy. Not ang- well, I am angsty too. We're both. Right. <laughs> I'm antsy to just like show it to you, which I get to do in a couple of days. I think we yeah, expect t- an today's e-vite. Tuesday. Oh my God. In 48 hours, less than 48 hours. I'll be there. So I will warn you the main part I really wanted to like be done is the one part that won't be done by the time you're here. Excellent. But then, uh, but other than that, it's completely finished. So um, I can't even, picture it i can't i'm not even gonna try to imagine it because i just can't wait to see it it's just a lot of um I, my i was having a little bit of a, a crisis because i feel like i've been hyping it up and parts of it that aren't even shown on camera are like some of the cooler parts and so i feel bad that like people oh are probably God, gonna look no, at it and we're be gonna like do a whole this tour. is it don't oh please don't be silly we're gonna do a whole tour it's gonna okay. be magical it's well, gonna be the talk of the town well, it already is. So I get, know. Get with it. Um, but so <laughs> I'm behind I'm ex- the times. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited. Today is RJ's third dirty thirty. Oh! Um, and so uh, his girlfriend has like a surprise situation fiance, set up for him. I think. Is it Beyonce's birthday too? No, fiance is oh. Beyonce. <laughs> his fiance. His fiance is Beyonce. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> yes, his fiance. You buried sorry. the lead if that's the case. Uh, but no, sorry. yeah. I, I, there's girlfriend. only a limited there's time fiance. where you can say fiance. So I feel like people want you to use it, you know, just to. No, get it, it totally there. makes. It just slipped my mind. I just. In my mind, their relationship is still so new, but I have to remember it's been like over two years. It's the start of COVID, right? Like yeah. a long time. Yeah, it's it's odd. It's an odd concept. But so we're doing something for him for his birthday tonight. And How fun. Uh, and then the last thing I'm excited about is that uh, Mariska Hargitay. Here's the situation. What? I have been. That's RJ's fiance, too. There's so many. Buried <laughs> no, leads. that one's mine. Don't worry. No, uh, that one's mine. Back <laughs> off. <laughs> There's truly nothing I would not do for Mariska. Oh, 100%. Um, and so I have been watching. Well, I used to be a huge fan of Law and Order SVU. That was like the thing every night of middle school and high school. My mom oh, and I would yeah. like sit down and watch Law and Order. Um, and I could never get past that one really wild season where like Mariska is severely tortured and all that. Yeah. Um, I I couldn't do it at the time that it aired. Uh, and I wrote off Law and Order SVU because I my brain couldn't process it's, the situation. Yeah. Um, and I've always, up until then, I've still always watched Law and Order SVU, but it's always been reruns, like obviously the Elliot Stabler years. Sure. And, and up until the torturous. Yep. Like, I, like I know the opening sequence to that episode so well, because it's when I know to go back to season one, episode one. (laughs) Yeah. Start over. Where, by the way, they say a a slur for, uh. Oh, they say many slurs. I know. But like, I remember the first episode, because I was like recently rewatching it. While I was pregnant, I was like, I'm just going to start over. And I, I think I FaceTimed you or something. And I was like, I don't remember being this horrified when I watched this back in the 90s or 2000s. Aged like milk. Aged like milk. a T word in there that's not great <laughs> that they say a lot. <laughs> oh, and an F word and an N word. Ooh, like, yeah. they say it all. Oh, boy. Um, and, uh, but so I actually started rewatching it during making the troll hole and i've literally gone all the way up to season 15 (laughs) holy shit and so um today i was very brave and i finally watched the episodes that i've been avoiding (gasps) and now i can officially you can keep going like about eight years too late can finally start watching what i I consider new episodes of good for you i don't think i've ever watched past that 
uh, either. I really, I knew what happened because I'd seen it in pieces every, every now and then I'd get a little brave and watch a clip of it. But I let, I made myself sit down and watch all three episodes and it was still, I wanted to fast forward. It yeah. Was that's, there are a couple of Criminal Minds episodes that like I had to stop watching the show completely for like a solid three months before I could like go back. Cause I was like too much, too much, too much. My mom um, actually got into Criminal Minds or oh, something yeah. like CSI or something NCIS. That's maybe that's my mom's big one. She she got loves into it during show. she got into it during COVID, and then she, like uh, she used to be a crazy helicopter mom, and it has come back. So mm-hmm. like whatever content is going on on that show, you have a f- succeeded in scaring her all over. I again. love that my mom watches that obsessively and gives like zero shits about my safety. Not she doesn't g- <laughs> give zero shits about my safety, but like she's like that's not the lesson I learned from that show. <laughs> oh, I've been getting like fearful phone calls, of, like like warning me like. I don't know. Like, I, I couldn't even tell you what the examples are, but I'll hear her and I'm like, what are you like? What's happening? <laughs> what's, a- what's going on in Fredericksburg that's that making you think about Derek this? Morgan in the background? <laughs> Is that Hotch? What's going on? <laughs> well, so, uh, you anyway, know, I love Shamar more. You know it. If you happen to write for any of those scary crime shows my mom loves, know that you're doing a great job you're invoking fear. <laughs> Uh, anyway, those are several reasons why I currently drink. Why do you drink? Oh, I'm so happy you asked. What's happening? <laughs> I went to get my nails done today. Uh-huh. And I don't often get my nails done. And like a couple weeks ago, I got my nails done for the first time since like before I was pregnant. And I just have a lot of, <laughs> this is going to be shocking to everyone, social anxiety. And so I am just always like nervous getting my nails done because I'm like I don't know like the like I've done it enough times I should be fine and know the etiquette and everything and but I just get nervous I don't know and so today I went and I was like I'm gonna ask for nail art which is like a thing I rarely do um and I was really really nervous and I went in and I asked for my nail art and I got it and I'm gonna show it to you now and you're not gonna like it because it's all lemons lemons oh Christine (laughs) see I wish your social anxiety kicked in a little more today. Uh, (laughs) I almost actually the reason I drink, I was literally standing there at the nail polish selection being like, oh, my God, I know tonight I'm going to say the reason I drink is because I had big plans to get a lemon manicure and I chickened out and said, like, just red or something. I was so (laughs) convinced I was going to chicken out and I was like, no, I have to do it. Um, But yeah, look, she made little like um, her name was Molly and she did a very good job. So there's a lemon slice on this finger. So proud of you. And then there's so, little baby lemons. I, I think the, the your middle fingers, ironically, are the ones I like the most. The most lemons of all. Oh, what a nice shot. Yeah. Just if anyone now wants everyone knows what our relationship looks like at all moments. <laughs> just lemons through my middle fingers at you all the time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very um I'm very excited about it because I, I feel like I uh faced a, a very tiny little fear, but you know, I was nervous and um we were both brave today yeah look at that i love that for us i love that for us too it's a very courageous day yeah well and that's really all the reason i drink i was just so excited about and the whole time we were talking for 45 minutes 44 minutes to be exact before the recording i kept like pulling my hands down because i was like oh my god (laughs) em can't see the lemons before we record well that's why i've been hiding my nails too because you're gonna be Uh... stunned when you see what i've done (laughs) <laughs> they I'm trying are... to imagine what could horrify me the most. <laughs> they pointing. are naked all uh... the time. What am I to say to you, Christine? Well, since we're both being brave, um, maybe we should see how brave we are with this story. And good se- good segue. Thank you. Good segue. I thought that was a good segue. Well. I actually would like to see how brave you would be in this situation because today we're talking about the devil's tramping grounds. What? And I would like to know if you think you could enter the devil's tramping no, grounds. Hell no. <laughs> Yay or nay? Hmm. I would do. It. Well, give me a minute to drink some more wine, and then I'll do it. What kind of a what kind of monetary dare would get you into the devil's tramping grounds? It's not even grounds? monetary. I think you and I have a similar approach to some things. Well, yeah, no shit, Christine. Mine's monetary. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Okay. Well, I feel like you and I both bow to social pressure in oh, yeah. a lot of situations. And I feel like we could talk each other. E- like, neither of us could want to do something. And we would somehow talk each other and ourselves. We've done this many times. Talk yeah. ourselves into doing it. 
for the and, story, for the and video. for free. Like, what is wrong with me? For I, free. So, like, I'm like, oh, I would need a million dollars. No, sh- no. You and I would talk each other and ourselves into it. I think we are really good at talk discussing a backup plan in advance. We're like, okay, That's if true. things go awry, what's the game plan? That's true. I'm also saying all this with with zero context of what we're even talking about. I just feel like in a scary scenario, like remember, okay, we can't talk about that. It's a spoiler for the live show. I was going to say something and then I was like, there was one moment where you really wanted me to do something scary and I was like, no, but I'm pretty sure if you had asked me like two more times, I would have been like, fine. Yeah, I know exactly what we're talking about. And for I the video, for the story, for the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I would have been like such a sellout. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I think if I just dangled it, if I if I spun it the right way of like, this is what could happen. You like, tried to. I remember you being like, I'm filming this, Christine. And I was like, man, way to guilt me. Like, that's the way to get me to do something like I am. Oh. Oh. Look, there's nothing I love than putting you in a sticky situation and <laughs> watching you squirm your way out. Because you always do. It's amazing. <laughs> it's just like, how are you going to do it? I don't know. I can't wait for this tramping ground, though. Okay. Well, the devil's tramping ground. I've also heard devil's stomping ground, but the main one seems to be tramping. Tramp which I always thought was like, is it tramping or trampling? Trampling? Oh. You trample? You, tr- you, you definitely trample people well you don't don't trample people but Mm. you a person could be trampled but i think tramping is like a type of like gallivanting or something lollygagging lollygagging around the devil's lollygagging grounds that's cute his silly little it sounds sinister though yeah well you tell me so it is in north carolina uh, not too far from you, I guess, in comparison to me. Yeah, and... <laughs> it's like, I guess, like 10 hour drive. <laughs> uh, well, hey, you could be there in a day. I, I could that be close. there in a day. That's true. So one, uh, it's one of North Carolina's most haunted locations, allegedly. And it's basically this local lore in Chatham County near Harper's Crosswoods. It's in the woods. Oh, well, um, I already don't like it. So it's this cute little spot in the forest. Mm. And allegedly, the devil uses this area as his personal portal between hell and earth. And he He comes here at night. on through. That's kind of it. He comes here just to pace. Ew. (laughs) And plot out his future devilish schemes. You know, that not to be Catholic, but here i go okay what Um, is this about just catholic things um (laughs) so it reminds me of the is it the garden of gethsemane where oh hmm let me look back on all of my education (laughs) okay when i met you you talked some bullshit about how you read the entire bible and i was like i did but it was honestly when was that 2017 never again I actually would like to read it again because I want to be you able to say like, that. But like you apparently I've never read it and I seem to know these things and you seem to have absorbed nothing of it. So you want to know why, it- though? You want to know why? Why? First of all, you went to Catholic school and like learned it. I just read it once and then the information fell out of my head, which is very common. Then with- why do you want to do it again? That's my question. I guess to see if I can retain it for at least like a year, like just to see. I don't know. I, then you're going to have to make flashcards. That's true. Never mind. You're it's right. It's a lot of work. Okay. I'm just so, going to trust the Catholic. Like for the, the person. practicing no, Catholic here. Honestly, I'm not a practicing Catholic. <laughs> I would like to make that very clear. Uh, but uh, I just feel like if no wonder you don't like to read. Like if that's the only book you've read in the past fucking five years besides Banicula, then yeah, no shit. You don't like to read. I literally just bought um, the Constitution. <laughs> All right. And by All I was right. like okay. I was like I was like, you know what? I need to know. I need to know about this. You don't though. Like just read it on the internet. That's what I that's what don't worry. I learned that because I bought it and What do you mean you bought it? Like I bought like a little copy of it. Just <laughs> We were at a bookstore. Like National and I... treasure or some shit? <laughs> why thought... are you like trying to talk about your right to bear arms? Like why are you buying the constitution? That's like such a weird dad thing, isn't it? I guess. I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm becoming more of a, a yeah, weird I dad guess anyway. That's I know. I just wanted to read. I felt like I, I should 
for myself, just like try to see how much of it I can memorize. Or, if I saw I don't your know. bumblebee, okay, I can tell you, we the people, in order to form the that's mo- the most preamble, perfect, you- and we all know that because the schoolhouse <laughs> rocks are relaxed. Ah, damn it! But the thing is, the schoolhouse rock ended at the preamble. I need the whole constitution no, written out in song. You it will be don't. Fine. Do you though? Okay, here's the thing. I think selfishly, yes, but not for any other reason. For what? Selfishly for what? Pure entertainment. I don't know. It's not entertaining. I don't know. Okay. It is to me. Why don't you read it or something? Like, it's equally as long. No, the Constitution, actually, it's just like a little pocket book. Little I'm, I'm book. mostly talking about the Bible, but... Oh. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, okay, here you go. This is the thing. If I saw your Bumble BFF profile, and it said, like, books I've read in the last five years the and it literally said the bible and the constitution i'd be like <laughs> what i don't need to be i don't need this energy that's a in my great life. point that's you a know? great point and mindset and and mindset the binicula might sway me the other direction but like mine would say like stephen king and some weird thriller romance novel and you're just like the bible and the constitution and that's it yeah, i feel like i feel well i guess and then if it's, i wrote if that a were... book you could add that too Also, I wrote a book and I'd be like, oh, is it like an analysis of the Constitution? I honestly, I only got that and wanted to, the reason I read the Bible the first time was because I I was hoping I would absorb more of it. But I really, I did get overwhelmed by the writing and it really tricked me up. It's a lot. But the, I wanted to learn about it because if people were ever going to come at me and try to use the Bible as their weapon, I wanted to be able to say, well, I've read the Bible and so so and so and so. Okay. Well, you can say that now though. You can say I read the fucking Bible. I can. I was really hoping I would be able but to those use arguments it more are as an all argument. Already on the internet, like go to Ranker or something or BuzzFeed. They've already selected all those passages that you can use. No, I know that now, but I still wanted to do it for myself, and it I got overwhelmed. Same thing with uh, the Constitution. I just went. I was like, if all these people are using this as like their, I mean, I, I weapon, do get. I'd like I do to get know the angle. why. I do understand the angle. Um, I feel but I like also w- understand. Please know it would not be on my Bumble profile. I was gonna say like we have limited days on this earth, and you're like, I'm gonna read the Constitution. I'm like, just fucking watch Marishka. Like, do something more entertaining. I don't know. That's kind of what ended up happening. I just okay, found it good. online and got an, a, a Spark Notes version. Of I'm it, but... clearly the devil on your shoulder here. I'm like, don't read the Bible. <laughs> don't read the Constitution. Watch the TV. The literal devil said, "Don't read the Bible." Wait, I'm pretty good sure. point. Or something like that. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> Well, hold on. All I was going to say is that this reminds me of the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus hung out the night before he was crucified. It's actually very sad. And he, and he was like to his dad, he's like, why are you doing this to me? And he paced in the garden all night. This just oh, reminds me of this devil that is sad. thing. Yeah. And it reminds me of this devil pacing around in the in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, but this one, he's, he's, maybe it was the dark side of Jesus when he was like, I'm ready to throw down if they're going to come at me like this. Uh, yeah. I, but it was, it's the devil's pacing ground where he like plots to like be bad to humankind or something. Like right. That. It feels like the, like the inverse, like the uh-huh. opposite of it, you know? Like maybe like what Jesus was really feeling that day. Maybe like his true feelings, like his diary mm-hmm. would have expressed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, blueprint theory of his innermost darkest secret maybe i do know like some people who've studied theology listen to this which i'm very proud of you for for not pulling all your hair out while you listen to us talk but uh i'm sorry i probably got all of that wrong but i do i I did it just struck a parallel with me that jesus was also pacing in a garden in the woods you know what I mean? I like to think of like jesus and the devil as like mirror images of each other so like it would make sense why on earth one is pacing and under they both have uh, in a... the below maybe someone is i don't yeah. know yeah like i feel like maybe um gethsemane and north carolina are like opposite on the axis or something yeah <laughs> we we know all about ax- access access too <laughs> okay latitude longitude you know the ups and the downs lefts you, and the rights i think you get it uh so where on earth were we oh yeah so he's the devil's tramping ground is used as an area where he can enter earth from hell and vice versa. And this is where he takes a walk where I like his, that. This is like maybe his smoke break from hell. Like he's right. just like, I need to get out for a little bit. I've been working overtime and Check then he just my Snapchat, see what's going on. And then he just paces this one little patch of earth. Gets a few uh, steps in. <laughs> he gets his steps in and he uses the space to quote, turn, uh, 
people uh, turn his bitter mind towards ways to bring human souls to damnation. Oh, so it's like a brainstorming is, session. Exactly. Where yeah. he's just kind of plotting away. Uh. Uh, apparently, so there's a podcast called the Carolina Home Podcast. And one of their hosts talked about how growing up, he remembers um, the school librarian telling them stories about this, which I love that the school librarian is like, you should check out Benicula and then go to the devil's <gasps> tramping ground. <laughs> and Em's like, no, I'm going to read the constitution. <laughs> <laughs> ironically the amount of time that i waited for fucking binicula I is know. like <laughs> it was impossible to get your hands on it was there was a one book and like a hundred kids but mm. so apparently there was this librarian who also talked about the devil's very, tramping ground to cute. the children I, and i, I kind of love that i love it too like scare them a little bit you know just like, like get that little little tinge of fear bring the keep the keep the lore alive <laughs> and uh Th here's the thing why do people think that the devil paces here do you want to take any guesses on why they think oh this is obviously the devil's tramping ground hmm. like anything about the property you might think this is gonna come out of left field but i'm gonna say it anyway oh Me? well okay it is a field so oh <laughs> oh <laughs> what was i saying oh why i think that the devil okay my thought, this is, again, going to come out of left field, but I'm thinking maybe there are fossilized dinosaur footprints here. And they're like, oh, footprints. It's the devil. No, is that no, not it? No, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like then it would be like an archaeological yeah, site. Yeah, I know. You're right. You're 100% <laughs> right. That's stupid. I don't know. I have no but idea. But you're not, you're not, well, you're not totally off on one of the theories because if the, if you're saying like, oh, because they found like some really old stuff there from before human the human period. I don't That's know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they, <laughs> one of the theories is that they're, uh, that it's just really old. And so, oh. it, it, but then again, like the definition of old is what kind of mean old. Everything's old. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, so the reason why it's called the devil's tramping ground is because oddly enough in this patch of the woods, there is a quote, perfectly round and absolutely barren circle of, 40 feet in oh. diameter field oh so it's just like someone almost like Ugh. no grass nothing can grow like in cut it a circle out like barren like no nothing can grow in Ooh, this circle that sounds like a ufo landing well that's one of the theories Christine. oh really okay okay so um it's completely barren nothing can grow at all in it and if anything tried to grow in it apparently there have been like moments where someone thought like oh something's happening let it, me put it, my it, corn here <laughs> it dies right away it oh, dies right no. Away. oh no additionally if you try to take something trying to grow inside the circle and move it outside of the circle and replant it it will also die well that's so sad something chemically it's just no nothing, chance nothing's growing there nothing's growing there if it's already sat there on top of that, if you try to put something in the circle to see what it will do, and this isn't just like your corn, which like people have tried to bring their corn in and then it dies. But if you even wanted to bring like, I don't know, a marble, a, a marble, a backpack or something, any random household object, if you leave it in the circle long enough, it will move on its own. Ooh! So people have been putting things in this circle and then they like they'll find it the next day either moved in the circle, thrown out of the circle, or completely missing. Ooh, ooh that's spooky. And the same thing will happen uh, to items that people have attempted to even, like, tie down. Because one of the theories could be, like, oh, well, an animal grabbed it in the night. Sure. But if you... Some people, like, literally bring, like, stakes and, like, try to, like, nail, like, their, like, whatever it is in the middle of the ground to, like, see if it'll stay and not move because of the wind or whatever, and it will be missing or Ew. moved or thrown out of the circle. Um, And I wonder how far out of the circle, because I think it'd be really creepy if it was just towing just the outside. line. Just outside. No, totally. Um, Basically, if you leave any of the stuff in the devil's path, the theory is that you're ruining his nighttime walk, and so it's <laughs> going to get fucked with. <laughs> get this corn out of my way. Yeah, who left their shoe and marble here? <laughs> so I I guess in this town it's maybe a common activity to for at least for like the the cool bad teenagers. Oh yeah, to leave something there in the circle and see if the devil messes with it. But Ugh. it has to be done before the sun sets because 
it gets too dangerous to be there once the sun has set. Sure. It's too dark, and this is when the devil appears. He might come over. And it's very dangerous. Yeah. So uh, there have been teenagers that will actually try to, like, for the people who are really brave and uh, uh, thrill seekers, mm-hmm. uh, they will like dare each other to stay overnight in the woods near this circle or camp inside the circle in tents Mm-mm. uh to see if their items will move or if the devil will show at all and mm-hmm. there's actually one lore that a group of boy scouts stayed inside the circle overnight in their tents which like who was their like what scout they, master or trying whatever trying to get some badge like, like what who's... kind of badge are you getting for that Whose dad was like, this is a good thing as, a, as, an, as an organized community of children. We yes. should do this. Also, like, did the parents sign a permission slip? Was it very clear on the permission slip what they were doing? I feel like somebody was being a little sneaky sneak. I, I Maybe. It, I don't know. Maybe it was just like a dad with his kid and his kid's friends from the Boy Scouts. And now we're making it into a thing. I don't know. But, maybe it was like, oh, this is a perfectly clear patch of sure why don't we put our tents right here yeah maybe they knew did not know what they were doing i don't know but so they all decided to stay overnight inside the circle in their tents to see if anything would happen and they woke up the next morning and they're like oh man like nothing happened but then they got out of their tents and realized that them and their tents were miles away (gasps) from the circle oh that's bananas miles miles no And so because this is such a well-known lore, locals have told their kids to never go near that area. Um, They've also claimed to actively avoid the area or to not even talk about it in some, in some homes. Um, I also imagine as a parent, just telling your kid like not to go into the woods at night is like a pretty fair thing to say. Yeah. I would argue that's a, a, that's a solid um, piece of advice. But I also understand if it's like a like a dangerous area because that's where like all like the bad kids are. Like that's just additional fear or, for your child. Right. You don't want or the, who knows who's out there. Also, yeah, exactly. Cause like if this lore is known in the whole area, then like there could be people who are waiting for someone to show there could up be to be Boy hurt them. Scouts out there. <laughs> <laughs> waiting. There could be a marble and you don't want to oh, see God. what's gonna happen. Oh no. Uh so People have also claimed that when they're driving past the area, they will see glowing red eyes from that part of the woods. Nah. And visitors to the circle have felt nauseous and dizzy. Other people have felt completely filled with dread. Um, there have been paranormal investigators who have gone there and like qu- basically quit on the spot because they were so uncomfortable. Oh, God. Um, one guy actually tried to drive to the circle in his car. And the closer he got to the circle, his car started stalling out. But when he decided that he was going to leave and turn the car around, his car started working better and better as he got back to the main road. And then he did it with a second car and the same thing happened. No, I feel like that's like radiation, like some weird thing coming from the circle that's like malfunctioning everything. Or some EMF situation. I don't know. Uh, One person actually got a photo of the devil's tramping grounds one time and allegedly the picture had one of the trees in the woods in the picture and the tree seemed to have an opening with a door and it looked very much like a portal ew so i think that either is where the theory of it being the devil's portal comes from or it like only emboldens that theory have you seen this photo no Mm -hmm. i haven't i couldn't find it i don't know if someone else finds the picture let us know um another time a man stayed out there and while he heard footsteps while he was in his tent near uh so he heard footsteps nearby his tent and at the same time his dog seemed to be in a weird dreamy looks trance oh no state like the dog had seen something he couldn't while he was also hearing footsteps Mm. Dogs also have been known to act really scared and whine and cower near the devil's tramping grounds, and they won't even go near it. And birds will refuse to build nests in the trees nearby. Get it. Forget it. So multiple types of animals are like, beg to differ. And then humans are like, I'll go in. It's like, God, (laughs) why are we so stupid? Well, also, if, if animals are afraid to get to that space, I guess that helps along the theory of, like, if you leave something in the circle, it'll mm-hmm. get moved and it's not an animal, right? Good point. Even though dogs are scared of this area, ironically, locals often report hearing howling near that part of the woods, which I, in 
maybe like hellhounds if it's a portal to hell, right? Yeah, howling sounds hellish. Sure does. <laughs> and, and earlier renditions of uh, this folklore actually claim that dark animals would appear in the circle. Mm. That you would just see like monster beasts. Um, all the way back to the 1930s, there's a newspaper article from the Chatham Record. And uh, this is a quote about these dark animals that you could see there. For more than a hundred years, and how much longer no one apparently knows, this spot has not materially changed appearance. It was also in the 30s that a huge, ghostly black animal began to haunt the spot. A supernatural beast that resembled a black bear began to chase raccoon and possum hunters from the grounds, <gasps> along with anyone else who dared trespass. Whether the beast is the pacing devil in another form or one of his mm. hellhounds is unclear. Oh, I hadn't even thought that it could be the devil himself. Yeah, so he's maybe pacing, and then he's, like, not pacing. He's sprinting. <laughs> so he just he just shows up and scares the poo out of you, I guess. But uh, that was uh, one of those uh, quotes that I just did was an article from the 1930s, and it says, for more than 100 years. So that means yeah. through the 1830s, people yeah. have been talking about this place. What? And it hasn't changed, like, the, the look of it, like, the creepy... Ooh. has stayed exactly the same and even then they were saying it was the devil's tramping grounds oh, I don't like and another that. another article mentions that the devil's tramping grounds uh this article was from 1882 and it was interviewing older locals that said that they had heard about it as kids so if this is 1882 and older locals are talking about it from childhood that means that this uh story or this lore could date back to into the late 1700s <gasps> so damn and all it is, I mean, realistically, if you are like a new tourist hiker and you ha have not visited this part of the woods before, you might just see it as like a patch of barren nothingness like and not think more of it. It just looks kind of like an empty space. Yeah. Like, um, so it doesn't seem that scary until you've heard the lore for literally hundreds of years. Yeah. And here are some of the theories as to. Oh, I can't wait. What it could be. My one of my thoughts is it literally could just be animals that are not afraid to be in the area, moving things, yeah, or footsteps or howling. Well, why won't anything grow though? That's weird, right? So why it won't grow? Those are some of the theories oh, okay. that I'll, I'll do right now. Um, some of them are very silly. Some of them uh, it ranged <laughs> okay. in. Some of them ranged uh, all the way into racist though. So oh, look out, okay. wide gamut. Wow. Um, the best known theory for why nothing will grow there, it dates back at least a hundred years. And it's that, um, one of the indigenous tribes there used to dance in a circle on the spot so much that plants stopped growing, uh, under where they would dance. Okay. Another one is that there was a battle between two indigenous tribes and so much blood was spilled that nothing will grow out of that ground anymore because something chemically happened from so much blood fall. Okay. Another one is that uh, this site is a native burial ground and that is linked somehow to the lost colony of Roanoke. Oh, whoa. Yeah. So all these not a big fan of, they seem to uh, associate, I don't know, may, maybe there's a truth to it and I don't know enough about the history, but it feels like they're just kind of... I guess it of, depends on whose theory this is. Like, if this yeah. is, like, random white folks theories, then, like, yeah, s step back, you know? Especially because it's, like, linking indigenous people with, like, unholy activities or with the devil or the something. The devil, like, right. Good point. Yeah. I don't know. Or, but then also there's, like, just like how you were saying, oh, maybe it's called that because... Um, this place is, you know, uh, is older than uh, the, there's something was going on here before we ever got here. That kind of narrative also happens here where it's like, oh, it's older than white people coming here. And so <laughs> it must be a native situation. You yeah. Know? Which and is like, it must be mysterious and evil. And yeah. yeah. And then it's linking like indigenous people with like a dark mystery. That's and a great like, point. Yeah. It's no, we don't like that. Early articles. Here's a weird thing too: is that a bunch of articles even like, like to further the story or to further the spookiness of uh, the devil's tramping grounds. There would be articles that I don't know if they are true or not, or if they were just like, you know, random scary stories. 
but there were a, a more than one that said like, oh, well, a white guy went and an indigenous guy went there. Obviously, they didn't use those words. Um, but it's like, <laughs> oh, a white guy went here and an indigenous guy went there. And the indigenous guy was felt really freaked out. And so uh, and so both of them left. And it was kind of this like weird, odd undertone of like, if even, you know, the indigenous people are freaked out. Mm -hmm. You know, it just kind of feels mm -hmm. weird. And also it's like, if these stories are from like the 1800s and a white guy and an indigenous guy are hanging out by themselves in the woods, I'd also be nervous if I were the indigenous guy. Yeah, what the guy. fuck is going on? Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't know what the context That's is. That's a very but fishy story. Enough articles were just kind of like vague enough to make it seem scary, but also it's like, it could have just never happened or if it did happen, there could be a completely different reason or it just all felt kind of off. Like we were pushing this yeah. in, a, in a weird way. I know what you're saying. For cooler things than using native tribes as props in a story. <laughs> um, another. What could uh, be cooler? And <laughs> just about tell anything. Me, tell me. Just about just anything. About anything. <laughs> um, so another thing or another theory uh, is that which I think is pretty cool. I hope I'm allowed to say I think it's cool. Um, is that it could be a fairy ring, which oh, is apparently I've heard of those. I never heard of them, but I guess fairy rings are plant circles caused by fairies when they dance in a circle together. Wait, you haven't which... heard of fairy rings? No, <gasps> I've heard of it like vaguely. Like I just know that it's uh, in some places very a very popular belief. All right, we will we will. I'll put that down as a, as yeah, a potential story. I would love to later. hear about that. Um, so, yeah, so I guess that also kind of fits with the narrative they're pushing of like, oh, indigenous people danced here and that's what caused it. But it's like in this theory, it's, oh, well, fairies danced yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like they're at least like a a mythical uh, yeah. <laughs> creation, not like a real. Less of a trope. <laughs> group you know? of people. Right, exactly uh so they think it might be a fairy ring which is also apparently a gateway to the fairy realm and that also f plays into oh, the portal yeah. kind of storyline um there's one story where apparently people stayed the night here at the devil's tramping grounds and they were once quote lulled to sleep with calming melodic music oh. that like was not of their own that's weird <laughs> uh and they woke up later outside of the circle oh so i I kind of wonder if that means that, like, you like the furries are like you're not welcome in the circle. Like, please stop trespassing. Or... Maybe because you're not supposed to walk through a fairy circle. I do know that. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, that'll that would explain it. Yeah. And uh, also, there's a lot of stories of like fairy music and kidnappings. There's a lot of oh god. <laughs> uh well like the, the fairies not like a kidnapper uses fairy music no no but, no i know <laughs> okay <laughs> no i do follow that yeah, yeah 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 uh but so apparently that's a that's a trope that kind of plays into this of like oh well maybe you're getting moved around when you're not aware of it yeah by you're these getting fairies. like lulled and then like yeah. moved okay um so anyway the one theory is that it's fairies another theory is that it's a ufo which i know aliens and ufos like who knows what science is true to that but i feel like i hear enough about ufos landing and like the radiation from their yes. craft i feel like for some reason that's the most believable one to me Isn't that Even, weird i have the exact same thought i'm just like i feel like this one it's my comfort space because i'm like well i feel like i hear about this one way more than anything else yeah so the idea is that a UFO landed here and the craft burnt a spot into its landing area and the radiation from alien spacecraft or alien technology is what damaged this area of the ground, which is also like kind of the concept of a crop circle anyway. And it just feels like a big crop circle. Yeah. And, you know, you do hear that um, when there are like alleged UFO landings and the radiation, one thing, and then also like oh, the, the grass died where it landed. And like, you do hear yeah. that. That's that's like definitely what my first thought was. Well, so they actually did soil evaluations <gasps> on the land. I was going to say, someone's got to check that soil. <laughs> but there was, at the time, there was no radiation detectable, although you could then argue that like, well, maybe their radiation is... They have a, we don't we don't have machines to detect I will say their radiation. The I ones know. that I've heard of with UFO landings, like they do detect radiation. I'm pretty right? sure. That's what I've heard too. Yeah, I feel like that's a thing. Uh also that would mean that aliens are like 
coming down here just to like be invisible and throw your shit out of a circle. So like, I, <laughs> yeah, good point. Unless maybe there's like a force field. I mean, we could get into like some really crazy theories, but uh, so one theory is that it is a UFO. Another theory, which is like more historical, I suppose, is that this property once used to be a mill and they used a donkey to grind their wheat. And as the donkey would walk the path over and over again to grind the wheat, the circle just became barren from so many footsteps on the, oh. on the path. But apparently there's no evidence of a mill being here. It's just kind of a thought of like, oh, maybe that's what happened. They just made the donkey walk in circles for so long. <laughs> yeah, in circles. Like That's so just sad. How monotonous. Yeah. Um, so here's... One thing, apparently one day a sign got put up here at the mm -hmm. Devil's Tramping Ground, and the sign called this area the Chatham County Vortex. What? So I guess it like someone was like, I don't like the name Devil's Tramping Ground. Let's call it something more whimsical. Uh-huh. So it's sometimes called the Chatham County Vortex based on what you're researching. Uh, and this vortex is apparently, according to one article, it is, quote, the anchor of a Magdalene crystal column of energy. Whoa. A lot of words. Uh, so this refers to, so Magdalene is Magdalene energy, which literally is from Mary Magdalene. Yeah. <laughs> and Magdalene energy, or also called like Mare energy. This energy is, quote, an expression of, an expression of divine feminine presence concentrated in one sacred spot. So, whoa, that's definitely a twist because it sounds to me like they're putting a positive spin on what this place could be. Yeah, like sacred and divine is definitely different from the devil. Yeah, and like a feminine presence when usually the devil is associated with more like... Right. I mean, he feels like a little bit of an alpha male, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the exact opposite of divine femininity. But so that's, I guess, another theory that, you know, what this place could be. But I guess the understanding as it's just, it just happens to be a vortex full of energy. But then another personal theory that I think you and I would both agree on is like... Maybe there's only a lot of energy there because a lot of people have brought energy oh, to that spot. Oh, good so, point. Good point. So in the 1950s, soil samples were collected again. And uh, basically they say that the reason for the circle is that there's a toxic level of salt in the soil, which is keeping the plants from growing. But they couldn't explain how that oh. much toxic salt would be only in a perfect in that circle. weird spot. A perfect circle. Like what a weird spot. Like something way for exploded that to happen. there and just like left yeah. all the salt in the soil. It's so random. Maybe like in the fucking 1600s, someone just had a big bag of salt in that tour and it just like. Oopsies. And they're like, oh man, I wonder if this is just going to affect the landscape for years and years to and come. And they were riding on a donkey and it was just going in circles and they were like, <laughs> I'm just spilling salt all over the place. <laughs> I hope so, nobody tries to put their shoe and their marble in here. Right. So in. So in the 1950s, that was their best explanation of like, oh, well, That's salt toxicity. Weird. So in 2015, <gasps> the they tested the soil again, and there's no salt toxicity. Oh. And they said that they can't come up with any reason why the soil is so infertile. And then they said, in fact, if anything, with years of visitors coming to this place and put using it as like a campfire spot, and I'm sure there's a bunch of people like that our parents would say are into dark witchcraft and yeah, like Satanist. come here and have fires and stuff <laughs> with so many people coming and making fires in this spot. Not only should this place not be infertile, but it should be more fertile than anywhere else in the area. Oh, and so there, the odd. soil, the soil researchers from like what, seven years ago, they said there's no reason for this circle to exist that they can come up with. That's pretty weird. So it's currently private property that's been kept in the same family for over 100 years. I guess they have nothing to say about it. And they're um, like, get off of... Maybe they're pushing them out at night. Well, so it actually, they, I think, loved the attention for a while and allowed visitors, like, all the time. And then by 2018, the people just kept littering it so much that they ended up having to make people um, stop coming. So that's the only reason why you bad. are no longer welcome there. But uh, maybe the, the devil's still throwing your stuff around. I don't know. Wow. That's wow. the devil's tramping grounds. Oh, that's the wildest thing. I've never heard about this. I will send you a picture right I now just, in the oh, chat. Yeah, I just love the idea that there are so many 
just like places we've never heard of that have like lore and like just little spots throughout the world that you, you would never know about. You would never know. I just love it. It's like so many mysteries. Let me actually, I'm going to text you. I like someone had to put an arrow as if you couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> oh, oh, it literally just looks like that's the Incredible weird. Hulk had a fire or something. Like it just looks like a big <laughs> a ass fire pit. So is the white part around it part of it or is it just this dark I, spot? I So I don't know. Maybe the, air, the arrow is actually referring to like a fire they had there or something because that looks a little more ashy. Yeah. Um. I think the lighter part, it looks just like a circle, but there yeah, happens to be a darker it's center. And I, freaky. I think the lighter part is supposed to be the footpath of the devil. And just like walking around. Just walking around and around like that donkey. Oh my gosh. How weird. Isn't it weird? So there you have it. If I, you're in North Carolina and you feel like trespassing, I guess, and breaking ooh. the law, you know. But uh, first of all, don't. If you do, send photos, but don't do it. <laughs> first of all time travel to before 2018 and i hope you have a blast there, there we go yeah wow that was a good one and a weird one thank you all right i have a story for you em that is um so bananas it's so freaking bananas okay and i saw this in a documentary back in i think 2015 or 2016 like before we ever started the podcast when i was living in glendale i watched this on netflix and was like what the fuck and this is uh <clears throat> the documentary was called the imposter i rewatched it it's on it's not on netflix anymore but it is on amazon prime and i remember finding it because i googled like best true crime documentaries on netflix and that's how i found it so it's the story of nicholas barkley <sighs> I don't I'm know just, him. Okay, great. Because I'm just going to tell you about it. It is just so wild. So Nicholas Barkley or Barclay, I'm not really sure, uh, was they say it differently in the show. Um, Nicholas Barclay was 13, living in San Antonio, Texas, with his mom, Beverly, and his 24-year-old half-brother, Jason. Okay. And according to his mom, um, Nicholas was 13 going on 30, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> okay, well, so was Jennifer Garner, so I relax. I love Mark Ruffalo. He was a cutie pie in that movie. God, I got so cute, so cute. Do you like? Do you think he's cute today? Yes. Cool. I think so. Right. I feel is like he? He, I feel like he looks so different. I, I is so stupid, but like twenty years ago, I feel like he looked so different. But I feel like he was. Maybe it's the he's like more of a got a dad factor now, and I'm I don't know. I think I he's have just a, a big crush on him. I just think he's a little cutie pie in uh thirteen going on thirty. He really was. That was when I was like, oh, I like. I also that. think I. I also think I just know him as Bruce Banner now. and That's what, uh, yeah, I, I was wondering. But yeah, no, I, I st I'm still into it. I'm still into it. Um, but yeah, anyway, so his mom described him that way. Uh, he was stubborn. He thought of himself as an adult. And she even said if he made up his mind he was going to do something, pretty much there was nothing you could do. So mm. Nicholas struggled behaviorally and was diagnosed with ADHD. Can relate. I don't know. <laughs> Can relate. <laughs> I want to point out, too, um, I forgot to say when this was, but he was born in 1980. So at this point, this is 1993 oh. that uh, this takes place. So unfortunately, cool. 13 going on 30 had not made its big debut oh. in the world. <laughs> It'll get there. Some It's coming and everyone feels it coming <laughs> uh, in their bones. Um, so Nicholas struggled behaviorally. He was diagnosed with ADHD and he had several charges on his record for theft. Uh, he had broken into a convenience store and allegedly threatened his teachers. Mm. And he was actually due to appear in court um, on a more recent charge. And there was talk of putting him in a group home for juvenile offenders. So he was struggling a lot. Uh, his family had a lot of conflict with him. Um, he had been in trouble many times. Um, this poor kid, he's only 13, already coming up on a hard time. Um, so Nicholas's mom had another son named Jason who was 24. So this would be Nicholas's older brother. And, uh, his mom asked, his mom, Beverly asked Jason, this 24 year old, her son to move into the house to help her handle Nicholas because he was just oh. a handful um, but according to a childhood friend of Nicholas, Jason 
was a selfish person. He was apparently really struggling with addiction. He made the house very volatile. Mm. And he allegedly introduced his mother to drugs as well. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So, like, he came to help and then, like, didn't help at all. Uh, so he basically worsened the family dynamics instead of, like, helping his mom handle, quote unquote, uh, th- Nicholas. And, I mean, the, it, it's very sad. It's just very sad because this kid is 13 and a lot of this talk, this description of him is very vilifying. Mm-hmm. Um and it's sort of like, you know, he had ADHD. He was only 13. His home situation was unsafe and scary, it sounds like. His brother and his mother were doing drugs. Um, and so he's I feel like through it, it. he's going through it and he's so little. And so it's hard to say like, oh, he was a juvenile delinquent. It's sort of like right. he was going through it. Um, and so it just makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit sad. Um, so he clearly probably needed some sort of professional intervention or something like that. I mean, in the home videos that they show in the documentary, he was very goofy and sweet and like was holding the camera and was like, I'm the director. Like he was just very like good kid. Yeah. Just sweet and cute. And like, obviously he had a lot of behavioral issues and you know, we can talk for days about that, but uh, he and his mom butted heads a lot. He was known to run away from home from time to time, but always came back the next morning. And Beverly, his mom, described him as a very street smart city boy. So the day he went missing, nobody panicked at first. They just thought, well, he's out there somewhere. He's staying at a friend's. He ran away, whatever. Sure. So it was June 10th of 1994, and Nicholas left to go play basketball at some nearby courts with his friends. He had $5 in his pocket from his mom. He went to go play. At some point, he called home to ask for a ride back. His older brother, Jason, picked up the phone and scolded him and said, Mom is sleeping. She's preparing for her night shift at Dunkin' Donuts. No one's picking you up. You got to walk home. Oh, damn. And this was the last time anyone ever heard from Nicholas. Yeesh. Okay. Yikes. So he had never stayed away for more than 48 hours. So on the third day of him not showing up, his mom called the police and they'd been to the house before over family fights, over drugs and other issues. So they basically wrote this off immediately as a runaway situation and sort of brushed it off. And in an interview, Beverly said his disappearance never made the news. It wasn't news to them. It was just news to us. So and it's sad because you see so many cases of like this where yeah the classic trope is like oh they ran away Mm -hmm. and they don't do anything about it and like oftentimes that is what it is but that still means they're endangered right like if they're a minor yeah like he's 13 hair right (laughs) like i'm like he's 13 like i don't know about you but if my child ran away i'd still be petrified yeah well like, like what's this uh, doesn't expo- doesn't fix it like oh he ran away well yeah go fucking find him i feel like if someone said well he just ran away i'd be like uh that's not that's not good like, oh that are we like pleased better. about that yeah, yeah it's so weird to me and like i know there's so much you know socioeconomic stuff behind this because yeah you know so but it's just like oh, it's so frustrating especially when you get into the stories where uh, maybe they weren't a runaway and you mm-hmm. just wrote it off and nobody looked into it. And so, I don't know. It's just such a trope at this point in the true crime world. So there were no leads, no clues, nothing to trace. And a few months after the disappearance, this is kind of weird. Jason, the older brother, called the police to report Nicholas attempting to break into their house. Mm-hmm. But when police showed up, like, Nicholas wasn't there. There was no way to verify that he had ever been there. And so they either think, like, he was mistaken. He was also struggling heavily with addiction, the older brother. So they're like, maybe he was just, you know, not confused or, yeah. Yeah, like, not with it. Um, so the trail on Nicholas basically went cold. And, like, I just want to point out one more time. He was 13. Like, he was a right. little kid. I mean, oh, it just makes my heart hurt. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it feels like nothing is going no, on behind yeah, the scenes. No, yeah, they totally to wrote it better. off. It's sort of like he wanted to leave, and it's like, well, he can't want to leave because he's a child. 
It's literal truancy last I checked, right? Yeah, like, is yeah. that like, that's not that allowed. Like not going to school. Yeah, and like, like being absent. <laughs> truancy, There's got to be another. That's such a good word. Uh, Elliot Stabler recently just called his child the truant uh, okay, on the show. So that's where it came now from. we're getting somewhere. Whoever uh, said it wasn't educational? I know it. Well, no, that, that's such a good point of just like, why is this child not important to you? Weird. Weird. Mm-hmm. So the trail went cold. Um, and his family just had to live without answers until what? this and the story October what? of 1997. Okay. So, so this, this is what this is four years later. It's like three years and some change later. The family gets a call what? that they've found Nicholas. That immediate, I'm already confused because I feel like that implies <laughs> For the last three years, they were doing work behind the scenes and didn't tell anyone? So it was actually a police officer in Spain who called. What? Okay. And said, Nicholas is here. Do you want to come pick him up? Shut up. Wait, so he like turned himself in and he was like, I've been missing? How did this happen? Well, let me tell you, Em. I'm so glad you asked. (sighs) I don't even know the best way because like... What? I'm trying to think of the best way to tell this. That's like the Christine, most... <laughs> her scene shifter. You have to just spit it out. What is I'm going on? I'm just going to spit it out. So it turns out the person calling was actually 23-year-old Frederick Bourdain, a uh-huh. French national currently living in Spain. He, I'll give you a little backstory on him before I before I go any further. So he was a lonely person, self-described. He mm-hmm. said he'd grown up in a loveless childhood. Uh, his mother was very young and his grandfather was extremely racist and hated him for having an Algerian father. His mother had um, had an affair with or a one night stand with an Algerian man. And uh, thus Frederick was born and his grandfather just never liked him or accepted him because his father was Algerian. Okay. And this guy, Frederick just dreamed of being cared for and wanted to relive his childhood with a loving family. And so he went to therapy and got help. Just kidding. He didn't go to therapy and get help. Um, <laughs> he really should have, <laughs> but he didn't. Good one. So, JK. <laughs> ha ha. Oh, saddest joke of all time. Instead, he decided he was going to make his own new childhood. Oh. Mm. This is literally one of the Law & Order SVU episodes. Yes! Wait, yes! Yes, I've seen that one. It might be even more like than a, one. Like a girl showed up at the door of her family to be like, I'm back after being kidnapped uh, for the last four years. And then they find out that the girl wasn't their daughter, but the actual daughter got killed. And the girl who showed up at their doorstep hated her family and so she was like i you need a kid and I'll i need parents it. yeah and didn't she have the same tattoo yeah she had the same mm-hmm. tattoo that's why they th- thought it must be her and they just didn't know they were like she doesn't look like my daughter but maybe it's just been so many years yeah well something. spoiler alert that's like the same fucking thing i wonder if that was based on this because <gasps> the time was 1997 i wonder when that yeah it's one of the earlier come on how weird is that it's literally one of the earlier seasons and <gasps> the sh- and law and order started in 99 Okay, that's pretty weird. Right from weird. the headlines. That right from is the headlines. pretty fucking weird. Okay, the, uh, okay, I'm on yeah, board. Yeah, no, but like it really does read like an SVU episode. Like it's so batshit. Um, and I know I just read that, or I just told that story last week of um, the woman who survived her kidnapping. And like that sounded yeah. like a Lifetime movie. I mean, these stories are just like plot twist upon plot twist. So wild. So one October night in Spain, Frederick called the police and he claimed to be a family in Spain, like a dad. He's like, I'm on vacation with my family in Spain. And I found this frightened child who's all alone and refuses to eat and he needs help. And the police are like, Oh, okay. Like bring this kid into the station. Uh And so the police, he tells the the police where to come pick up this kid. And it's Frederick. And it's so, I think the reason the, the, the documentary is like so 
a horrifying is because Frederick is interviewed throughout this whole, he basically tells the whole story and he's like smiling and like telling it and like what? laughing and just like, anyway, yeah. this is how I got here. Like just Disney channel original, like, <laughs> Hey, it's me. I feel like I would have already felt a red flag inching up with him laughing. I feel like this should be like a really emotional moment, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it, it's chilling i guess that might be the best word like it's just chilling to watch him tell the story with like no he doesn't seem too concerned about it it's yeah. like oh my god so frederick poses as this lost and traumatized child and he basically when he's t retelling this and kind of like smiling and like being like kind of coy and like <laughs> Isn't this silly? Yeah. Um, he's telling the story and he says he never told authorities that he had been sexually abused at this point or hurt, but he behaved in a way where he knew the authorities would assume he had been abused. Oh. So he's like, I didn't have to tell them anything. They just looked at me and were like, oh, this child has been just abused. Mas master manipulator. Yes. Yes. Like fully acting. Um, and so he ended up in a group home at first and he kept being grilled about his identity because they had to figure out who the hell he was. So finally, he decided to make up a story and he said, I, I'm a runaway from America. And the social workers were like, OK, well, we need to find your family then. And he said, OK, well, I'll <laughs> it sounds wild, but basically they let him stay in the office that night, like in the police office. And I, I assume... It's because, like, they didn't know where to put him. Sure. But he basically said, like, they just, I said, like, why don't I just stay here overnight and I'll call my family. And they said, okay, you can stay here overnight. Mm -hmm. So they let him just hang out in the police station overnight by himself. This, uh, so does this kid, I mean, I know he knows he's being sneaky because he's, like, kind of implying things. But it, does he feel remorse in hindsight for this? Or was he just kind of like doing it for survival no. or? Okay. Uh, I don't believe he feels remorse just by the way that he tells the story with like zero concern. Like it just seems like he's just like, guess what? This silly thing happened. Um, Weird. Yeah. And so I wonder, we definitely get more insight later into like his background and like why, but it sounds like he just had a very troubled, like he was just, I, I honestly don't know what would possess you to behave like this, but it sounds like he is lacking some sort of empathy. empathy. Because uh -huh. especially when I tell you later, like some of the shit he did just for fun on the side and it's like, oh God. Uh, okay, some of the well, shit he was pulling is like, that's not for your own sake or for your own survival. That's for your entertainment, you know? It like was some, just to have something to do To do or something. something. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So my guess, not as a professional and not as a mental health professional, but my guess is, like, there's no, like, remorse here. Um, and so at this point, he's kind of just winging it. Like, he doesn't really have a story in mind except, oh, I'm an American kid and I've, I'm missing from my family so okay. he somehow talks them into letting him stay overnight in this police station and that night he uses their phone to start calling random police stations around the united states so wait he didn't even have a monitor with him or like a, no like someone on a night shift alone with him. some now I'm understanding the craziness behind it because I really thought like, oh, of course they would let him stay like in the locker room or something because people in, are like, working the interview there around room, the clock. Right? Yeah. yeah. And like, we'll give like, him a blanket and like lock the door. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I didn't know they just gave him free reign of a fucking police station. Right? And I feel like that that gives insight into like how manipulative this fucking guy was because uh -huh. he was I'm like, getting it now. I'm, I'm going to call it. my family tonight. And they were like, okay. And so he just fucking started calling random police stations around the U.S. And eventually he got put through to the Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Virginia. And he claimed to be an officer named Jonathan who had an American child who seemed to be about 15 or 16 years old with him in Spain who needed help. Mm, I mm -hmm. see. Okay. So there's the connection. So he gave vague details about the kid being missing for like three years 
And the woman on the other end said, oh, well, it could be Nicholas Barclay. He comes up in the system as a potential match. And he says, this is like to me, like this didn't stand out in the documentary, but to me it stood out. He said, can you fax over the missing persons flyer? And to me, I'm like, wait, so this guy had to find their fax number to be like, can you fax me a picture? That's actually such a good point. Like, how did he know like their internal I thought that was so wild that he like got them to fax the information over a picture of this kid. And he was like, he looked at the picture and said on the phone, he said, "Uh uh-huh. Yep. That's him. I have Nicholas right here with me. Oh my God. Because he looked at the photo and said, I think I can pull this off. I think... I'm going to be that kid. <sighs> what the fuck? But in this is one of those things where, like, I know I've said it before in the past, but, like, if it weren't criminal and morally unethical, I am impressed by the genius. Like, I am I yeah. am impressed by the, the, the being able to even c- concoct a plan like this. I hate that it was, like, put in motion, but, like, Totally. Who thinks of this? Who no, thinks of totally. this? No, totally. And it's sort of like if only his powers were used for good. Yes. Think, think about yes. what could have happened. You could know? take over the world. <laughs> this is why I love the movie um, Catch Me If You Can. It's my favorite movie. Oh, that's I just, such a good movie. It's just like it gets me every time. Just like that element of like trickery and like, like what a mastermind deceit and like mastery. Mm-hmm. I just think it's so, and like socially tricking people like i think it's fascinating but then when it comes to this it's like so sick when people use it for (laughs) such a fucked up reason yeah so he basically says yes i'm this police officer i have this 15 year old kid with me and let's get in contact with this family so of course they immediately call nicholas's family and they're like guess what we have your son which is like oh this is where it just gets so ethically horrible uh, so Nicholas's older sister, Carrie, and she becomes like one of the main characters. And she's also interviewed in the documentary. She called and said, I want to speak to him. And Frederick pretended to be this like a social worker or police officer. And Carrie even described him as very reassuring. So clearly this guy's a fucking master manipulator. Yep. And he said, I have Nicholas with me. Um, and she was like, can I talk to him? Can I talk to him? And basically, he pretended to be Nicholas long enough to say, I love you, like really quiet Oh, to Carrie. And she started crying and she was like, oh, my God, you really do have my brother. And so she Ugh. really, really believes this. She really thinks that like, OK, they found him. Also, side note, like this means he changed his voice on the phone. Oh, yeah. He was like. Let me go get him. Yeah. Hello? No, hundred, like ma- you know? faking the whole thing, faking the whole fucking thing. It's just all the tiny little things that you think about afterwards and you're like, man, like what on earth is going on? Yes. And like, if you think about it, the time difference, like it was nighttime and he was alone. Mm-hmm. And then in, in Texas, he, it was much earlier. So he was able to call and like pretend to be a police officer, even though like it was what midnight, it's you know, just so savvy, but savvy for evil. In the wrong, I know, for such a fucked up reason. Um, so Carrie is like, wow, I can't believe that you found my brother. So the U, uh, the FBI and the U.S. Embassy in Spain got involved. And uh, clearly this was a minor, so they needed to act quickly. And he, I guess, spoke English well enough that officials were convinced he was American. But, I mean, if you listen to him, he has a very thick French accent. Not very thick. Like, he speaks English very well. But, like, he definitely has a French accent. So to me, I'm like, that's kind of weird. I mean, he's been gone three years. But we'll like, get to that, I okay. guess. Okay, yeah. I I mean, I I have nothing for you as someone who's never had to switch accents as quick right. as a phone call. Right, but, right, <laughs> but, right. Uh, yeah, you would think that would be, for someone who seems to know the whole plan, like, wouldn't you have an excuse for that? But maybe he does have an excuse and you haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Oh, yeah, he does. No, you're exactly right. That's well, kind yeah. of what ends up happening. So he speaks, like, really good English. So the officials are just convinced he's American. And Frederick says about this time, I didn't stop because I didn't think of stopping. But when he got another fax that showed Nicholas. So now he's like, he's like, I'm Nicholas. And they're like, okay, you're Nicholas. We're going to send you to Texas. And then they send in a fax 
of a full colored picture of Nicholas. And he was like, well, shit, this kid is blonde as can be, bright blue eyes. And Frederick himself, dark brown hair, brown eyes. And is like, how on earth does he explain this? Oh, M. Oh, I, I feel like you're going to tell me he did some, like, obviously dyed his hair. Yep. And then he, like, I don't know, ate enough chocolate until his eyes turned brown. No, I it, have no it, idea. No, it's just, it's just his nuts. Okay. Just, it's just his nuts. I'm, I'm very hesitant. <laughs> <sighs> it's so bananas. So he, okay, the other problem is when Nicholas disappeared, he was 13. So now he would be 16. Well, fucking Frederick is 23. Okay, what is going on? <laughs> like, he's twenty three, and and so there's... are we just gonna say like early bloomer, and like he just shot right up yeah. with, uh, with stubble that's kind of maybe whitening already? Like, Honestly, what? one of the FBI agents at some point was like, he had this like dark stubble coming in, and I was like, he's blonde and sixteen. Why is he growing a How beard? How did a whole like police force and town? And then maybe family. I know. How were they all like, aha, that tracks a hundred times for a hundred different things. This is why it's things. so alarming. It's so alarming. I feel like Law and Order actually had to like, like dim it down. Dim down. A hundred percent. I feel like usually they have to make it so much worse. And because the tattoos, that comes into play. And it's like the least of all of this. Right, right, right. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I feel I like. Feel like like Mariska Hargitay went to the producers and was like, this has to be more believable like, because there's no way in hell anyone's <laughs> right. going to stick with us for this. That's how wild it was. So obviously like 13 to 16. Yes, there's a difference for a teenage boy to grow in that time, but like not so drastically. So according to Nicholas's mom, Nicholas had beautiful blonde hair that kind of looked like a pixie. Like he was really light, really blonde. And Frederick, like I said, had dark hair, brown eyes, and was a full-grown man. So he was like, the fucking jig slash gig is up. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know which one's right. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately don't. I'm pretty but sure it's the jig is up. The jig is up. Okay. The jig is up. And he runs away because he's like, I can't pull this off. I'm just going to leave. It's too far. He's like, I'm, I've am i gotten too far and I'm in too deep. I'm going to run away. But officials went out and found him and rescued him and brought him back to the group home. Oh, my God. I know. And Frederick's like memory of this. He says, God didn't want me to leave this place. He was like, this just fate. I got brought back. And like, this is just the storyline I had to follow. Huh. OK. So instead, Frederick dedicated himself to passing as this 16 year old kid nicholas he had a kid in the group home this girl give him three stick and poke tattoos that matched the tattoos that nicholas had from the missing flyer um the good news for him was that they were relatively simple so like he just got them basically like stick and poked on himself hmm. uh he also bought bleach and he dyed his hair blonde which like I know you kind of touched on this, like, nobody was like, why is this kid bleaching his hair and, like... Right, like, do you have a reason for yeah, this? Yeah, so like, sketchy. Yeah, I feel like I'd at least be like, oh, why did you dye your hair blonde? Just, like, even if even if the answer is just for fun, like, I feel like you should have a reason ready to it's go. It's so weird. It's so weird. And so he, why like, Why is your five o'clock shadow... Yeah. Why like, is your five o'clock shadow so coarse? Why are you graying like an old, <laughs> old man? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> why do your knees crack? Hang oh, on. Oh, no. Um, so... This makes me sad, but like Carrie, the sister, soon hopped on a flight to Spain to pick up her brother. And she was saying in the interview, like she was from small town, Texas. She had never left the country. This oh, was man. like just a wild trip. She didn't sleep for days before her flight. And she said she just remembers wanting to see him, hold him, smell him, just Aww. get there. And then like that breaks my heart into a million pieces. And this is a good time to even mention that, like, I guess if you're the parents or the family i could understand like especially up until like having not seen him face to face and seeing how different he looks like just being desperate for the chance of like absolutely. maybe absolutely like i could i could totally 
believe that. And I'm quite more frankly, if the FBI says or the the whatever embassy says, no, this is him. I'd be like, yeah, okay, if you say so, right? Yeah, I I think I'm just more shocked by like like professional by officials, the officials who are like, what is going on here? Who don't have emotional stake. Yeah. Like, I think that's what it is. Is like, of course, the family wants to believe it's him. But it's like the officials who are like somehow duped. It's so mm-hmm. weird to me. Um, and I guess, you know, if you have the tattoo, it's like, well, he has the same tattoo. But like, even before that, they were already convinced. It's just so weird to me. But so she sees Frederick for the first time. And apparently he is having a major panic attack. Um, and in the interview, he's, he's, about sa- to get, he's about to get found out. Yes, he thinks he's about to get found out. And he calls it a game. He says the game was over, Ugh. which already fucked up that he calls it a game. Well, he probably said that because he didn't remember the phrase, the jig is up. <laughs> so well, the game is well, over. That, well, that the game right. is over, I think. <laughs> Well, well, done, well, well. well <laughs> if done. we're gonna go there <laughs> if we're gonna joe there okay <laughs> oh my fucking god Good so one, Christine, uh-huh. you really know that well thank you so she sees frederick who's having this like panic attack and she said she wanted it to be nicholas so badly that she just believed it was him and i can fully understand why that would be yeah you see the blonde hair you see a teenager you see the tattoos and you're like that's my brother I so, also liked it also is an interesting uh, psychology experiment because absolutely. I like to think that if my mom was only missing for three years, I'd be able to spot her anywhere, anytime and know absolutely for sure whether or not that was her. But absolutely. This story seems to be leading us. It like flies in the face of that. Yeah. It makes me like wonder myself like, oh, if I'm if my mom were missing for three years, how how far would my mind go to have me accept this other person yep or or how how desperate I, I would know. i be for like a resolution a chance, yeah. or anything but i mean and i guess part of it too is that like from 13 to 16 i feel like somebody can change so much that's true do you know what i mean like that's I, true i feel like from 13 to 16 you could change so much whereas like if I think if like someone our parents age was gone or uh, us for three years that it wouldn't be like such a drastic like I mean like even like Leona in three years like you have no idea what she's gonna look like yeah no clue so I wonder if part I I mean I have to assume part of it is like they just thought oh he grew up in those Mm -hmm. three years and that's a good point he did also have the same nose which is very interesting and like i'll get to that in a minute but uh carrie saw him and just immediately had this she called it a sense of immense relief just seeing touching kissing holding him he's here we're here i have him Mm. and she described his nose she said she'd recognize his nose anywhere and like oh it gives me such creeps because when frederick is telling the story in the interview he says she said she'd recognize my nose anywhere and he's, oh. she said it looked like Uncle Pat's nose. And it's like... So manipulative. Yeah, and he's so entertained by it. And it's like, God, this poor woman. And also, what a weird angle of victim blaming of like, well, it's not my fault. Like, she said she'd recognize me anywhere. So I didn't her. tell her. It's my yeah. nose. Exactly. Ew. So, yeah, she basically is like, oh, my gosh. he had, And they do have a very similar nose. And so I guess she just was like, that's him. And he also wore sunglasses, a hat, and a scarf, and he spoke very softly in an attempt to disguise his accent and acted super withdrawn. And Carrie had been told that he had escaped a sex trafficking ring. Ugh, so, like, his behavior would obviously change from the trauma. Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. So she wrote it off to trauma and, like, gave him room and gave him space And she did show him photos of the family and asked him what he remembered. And she pointed out each family member and named them for him. And some people were not convinced by his like little show. So before they let him leave with Carrie, he was questioned by skeptical judges who showed him more family photos that he had not seen and basically quizzed him. Mm. And he somehow got four out of five. Correct. Probably. What? I know. Probably just based on what, like Carrie had just shown him like, Oh, look at our family photos. Do you remember uncle Pat? Do you remember whatever, whatever. And, uh, so somehow 
when they showed him these photos, even in the interview, he's like, I knew he was like, if nothing else, like now is when I was going to be found out. Right. But he got four out of five correct. And they were like, well, I guess it must be him. So they fucking let him go home with Carrie. How strange. I know. And so she basically took him home to Texas and they flew back. And his whole family was at the airport when they arrived. His mom wanted to run to him, but he seemed like really standoffish and scared. So she just took his hands and like gently hugged him and said she'd missed him. Um, And then on the drive home, they played music for him and sat in happy silence. And Carrie explained that she had smiled all the way home and couldn't keep a grin off her face. That's so sad. So fucking sad. Um, Mm. And so this is just like a side note, but just like so fucked. So Frederick arrived at this house in around San Antonio and he was disappointed because why he was like oh i thought i had tricked my i had tricked everyone into a better life a hundred exactly yeah gross yeah and he said his thought of america was always like big city fancy people you know and now they're in like rural suburban san antonio like not what tv shows you what an entitled (laughs) What it like? Yeah. Oh well, I shouldn't have even like I should have found a different family. He's like, I want a loving family, but not this one. It's like, okay. oh my god. So he thinks this is like kind of disappointing and a little too shoddy for his liking, but too late now. So Frederick literally starts going to high school as Nicholas Barclay, and shut he, the fuck. Up. I'm not even kidding. He <laughs> starts posing as a 16 year old despite being in his 20s. And he apparently even had a thing with a girl in the neighborhood and that he would like. Who's probably a minor. Please tell me it was not a minor. Of course. A high school kid. Uh, So like fucking yuck. He's an adult. She's like a 16 year old. He's like, oh, he blushes when they talk about her. He's like on the phone with her all night. And she thinks he's another 16 year old kid. And he's in his 20s. I mean, it's just so icky. And he just took this as like, this is my shot. This is my shot to be in a family. He rode the school bus to and from school every day. And he described it as being just like the American dream. This is what he had wanted. Except the house is garbage. Except I have to live in like a fucking shotgun house. Too bad for me. I don't get to live in Manhattan. Gross. (sighs) Gross. So the family didn't reach out to the FBI at first because they wanted Nicholas to have time to heal on his own. So it was an FBI investigator who contacted them first, insisting on interviewing him because they were like, well, if he's been abducted by this sex trafficking ring, we got to fucking find out who did it. Yeah. So they call the family and they're like, we need to talk to him and uh, we need to talk to Nicholas and figure out who abducted him. This fucking story that he tells He says he was playing basketball down the street and he was chloroformed and taken into a van by military officers. (laughs) That's just step one. Oh, have how many steps? He said that the military members kept many children whom they would drug and move constantly, all while raping them and physically torturing them. He said they'd put headphones over his ears that played a message which said, you are not you, over and over. What? That they broke his hands with a baseball bat. They broke his foot with a crowbar. And he even walked with a limp. He said they hid the children's identities by putting a special solution into their eyes that changed their eye color. Oh, my God. (laughs) I literally earlier almost said, like, he must be wearing, like, an eye drop. Yeah, that's, uh, I, Okay. And, like, that's really wild because wouldn't the FBI be like, that's not a thing? <laughs> right. Like, did they think, like, oh, my God, we just landed on, like, some special wow, this technology. Shit. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't have the a government special government is holding out on us. They're using it in their sex rings, but we You're don't right. know about it. It's like, what? Mm. He said they burned him, fed him insects, did scientific experience on experiments on him put needles in his eyes like he just went on and on and the fbi agent said she left the interview shaken which like she doesn't normally feel after an interview and she said she couldn't imagine any child making stuff like this up Mm. she was basically like this must be true why the fuck would you why would a kid make this up 
I, yeah. She, did, she didn't realize he was 23, you know. Well, and I, I also guess, like, I know so little about, I mean, I'm very fortunate to know so little about, like, what a human trafficking ring would look like. I, I almost could believe anything that they do to you, especially if it's horrible and scary. Like, I mean, I guess you can get, or, and also hearing you're not you, like, nice touch uh, nice on fucking letting, touch. On letting everyone know that, like, they brainwashed me into not being who I used to not be. having and... my accent from Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yep. 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 So she was like, well, there's no way some, a kid would make this up. And she was like, shit. She was just like horrified to think she had a military trafficking ring on her hands. Yeah. That was like the U S military. And she was like, holy shit. So Frederick was like, I fucking won this game. Like I'm winning this game. Uh, his family believed he was Nicholas. The FBI believed him. He had a U.S. passport. Uh, people in town just believed he had lost his memories to trauma, and that's why he didn't remember specific locations or friends. Sure. That's what they said in Law and Order. Yeah. So, like, well, she like, just can't remember. She can't Every pull time his... she would, like, get trapped in something, she would just be like, I'm sorry, I'm confused. And it, yes. would, it worked. Worked and, pretty like, well. And, like, what are you going to say? No, you're not. Your trauma didn't do that to you? Like, how yeah. would you know? And so they just, like, let him have that space and trusted him. And he said, I finally succeeded to become a kid again, a second chance to go to school and to succeed this time. Oof. You would Oof. also think, though, that, like, like, I mean, I don't know. It's all very nuanced and all that, but I would think if you really were traumatized and now you just have to go back to school after three years, like wouldn't your grades deplete? Wouldn't you have to like be held back? Like you'd think you'd have some sort of like traumatic repercussion, right? Like, I mean, do you just go to junior year from eighth grade? You just go and to homecoming like, and you're like, I'm fine now. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it would be, yeah. Yeah. And they just were like, well, I guess he's back and I don't know. He's, he's clearly good at what he's doing. So I'm he's not going to like something. Yeah. judge anyone else yet. People are convinced somehow, but the only person who wasn't convinced was Nicholas's half brother, Jason. Do you remember uh, the one who yep. was 24 at the time yep. who said, we're not giving you a ride mm -hmm. and his now 27. Allegedly he showed up, looked at Frederick coldly, barely welcoming nicholas his brother back home turned around and fucking left and was just like nope i'm not participating in this he was like this is uh, this is too kooky nicholas was ba uh sorry frederick was basically like yeah jason was the only one who was like nah that's not him and but but didn't say that's not him just like fucking left which is so weird to me but whatever i wonder if he just like could kind of smell trouble and was like i don't need any more of that I guess so. I mean, yeah, he did have enough trouble on his hands. Um, but there was this TV show who had heard the story of this American boy rescued in Europe. And so this TV show hired Charlie Parker, P.I. Oh. <laughs> and so they hired this private investigator, Charlie, to track down Nicholas so they could interview him for the show. And the FBI had specifically told Nicholas to stay away from the media because if this really was like a high ranking military sex trafficking ring, they didn't want the media picking up on this because they wanted to like get in before they knew the FBI was onto them. Sure. So they were like, don't go on TV. But instead, Nicholas was like, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. And by Nicholas, <laughs> okay. I mean Frederick. So he does the interview while Charlie Parker P.I., is on the scene watching the interview to just like, I don't know, suss out what's going on. Hmm. And while Frederick is being interviewed or quote unquote Nicholas, he is looking at the photo of the real Nicholas at the same time. And he's like, this kid's eyes are bright blue. And he's looking at it. And then he goes, this, this can't be right. So he realizes in that moment, like that's not fucking Nicholas. There's no I, way. I, apologize but i feel like that was like several steps ago like I feel, <laughs> like why are we why the are pi you was the only one to figure it out <laughs> like um, like what a good detective but also it just makes me wonder like how did everyone else but then again you know i don't wasn't there to hear his sob story so i know it's so hard it's and it, i wonder if it's partially you know that psych experiment where they show like 
multiple lines of different lengths and they say like which one's Mm -hmm. longer and everyone in the group is a plant except for one person and they all say like the shorter one is longer and then the last person just says like oh yeah me too the shorter one's longer because they just go along with the story what's it called it's it's a it's one of like the conformity tests oh yeah it's like a group think type thing i don't know yeah i guess it's the same thing of like if everyone's saying it's him i guess it's him especially when you add in not just the conformity part of the psychology test but the uh, being told by authority part of the yes, psychology test a hundred percent like you believe of course you believe the interpol and fbi are like yeah that's him look at the tattoos and you're like well how do you argue with that yeah and like yeah. why would you think someone's pretending to be him like why would that be your thought like right someone got fake tattoos to pretend to be our missing son it's so like, wild that sounds it sounds equally flabbergasting absolutely as the what you're hearing right now as the actual story exactly and you'd rather believe that he was actually here so he's looking at him he's like that kid has blue eyes and that kid has brown eyes and he requested a photo of nicholas's ears oh apparently this is something i tried to look up and i could not find but apparently at least in the interview he says this pi says Martin Luther King Jr.'s murderer was identified and caught based on his ears. Oh, fun tr- fact. I, well, not quite, because I tried to find this and I could not find oh. any information. I can't believe a goddamn word you're saying in this whole episode. No, I so know. Far. Don't <laughs> trust me for one I'm second. I'm confused and scared. Yeah, <laughs> you should fucking should be. Um, so, yeah, it was very weird. I don't know. But apparently, like, the ears of a person don't change over time. And so, like you know Mm. they shouldn't change and so back at home he compared the ears of nicholas and frederick in photoshop and if you do look at photos like they have completely different ears which does not make sense like your ears wouldn't your earlobes wouldn't change shape over a couple years and so uh he called the fbi and was like oh hey it's me charlie parker pi uh (laughs) frederick is a fraud uh sorry to tell you but that's not actually the kid you think it is i also wonder if he went yeah, I hope this isn't too shocking. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, is this awkward? Like, has anybody said this yet? Because hey, right, is anyone like, else was anyone doubting this? Because I feel I like the they're only about one? to have a, they're about to have a really good day when I tell them they were right. Yeah, like that one intern at the FBI who was feeling weird about this. They were right. correct. So the FBI warned Parker not to interfere with a federal investigation and said like listen, the family says it's him. Like they would, his own mother would have known if it wasn't actually him. And Parker was like, you tell me whatever you want, but I'm convinced that this is not the real Nicholas. And he got really freaked out because he was like convinced that Frederick was either a spy or a terrorist. He was like, why the fuck would someone like go through all this to pretend to be a 16 year old kid? Yeah. I would think this is like a weird undercover situation. Yes. There must be some like plot or like terrorist plot or spy situation. Like there must be some reason he's doing this. And so the FBI then flew Frederick to see a doctor to sort of uh, see if they could uncover more about his abduction. And apparently the doctor pretty instantly felt like something was off. So based on Frederick's accent, the doctor knew he could not have been raised in an American English speaking household because Mm. Frederick could physically not speak in his alleged childhood Texan accent. Oh, interesting. It's also very much like the three versus the three situation. What's that? Remember we did this last time where like an inglorious bastards like he got caught because oh, the he three. Couldn't... Oh, my screen was covering half of your face so I didn't oh. see your hand. Yeah, 3 3 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, cuz Germans do it this way. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like a that should be if not innate anymore, it should or it, it, it should, should come not... out if you try. Yeah, yeah exa- if, you should know it somewhere. You should at least you. be able to fake a really good Texan accent at this point. Uh, you'd think so. And like, that's the part that always stuck with me when I started watching this, which is like, if he lived in Texas till he was 13 and never spoke English for three years, like you'd still have it. Like it wouldn't vanish. You it's could just, at least, even if you were faking it, you could fake a decent one. You'd think so. And he just couldn't make the right sound. Like his mouth literally just didn't huh. do the drawl, as they say. Huh. As nobody says. But 
<laughs> I, well, Let's I, they say it enough it. that I know what you're talking about. So. Okay, there we go. So he couldn't do it. And the doctor was like, um, ding, 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 red flag, emergency, pressing probably the secret alarm button under the desk. Like, this fucking kid is not from <laughs> Texas. I don't know who's telling me this, but he's not from Texas. And the doctor said even if Nicholas had been forced to speak French so traumatically and with his, like you were saying earlier, with his, like, um, your piece in saying you are not you you yeah. know even if he had somehow been brainwashed and forced to not speak english and forced to speak french so traumatically that he got this french accent it's apparently nearly impossible that he couldn't at least for a moment pull out his childhood mm-hmm. texas accent so he also felt like the way Frederick was recounting his trauma was an act because he had worked with a lot of trauma victims. And he was like, this is not ringing true. There's something off. So he tells the FBI, hey, this fellow's a fraud. And so now the FBI are like, OK, we've got two people telling us, like, this is not the right kid. He's lying. So they call the sister, Carrie. And they basically say, this is not your brother. Remember how we said this is your brother? JK. Fun fact. (laughs) JK, it's not. And they said, we don't know what he's doing here, but he could be very dangerous. Uh, We're don't, don't pick him up at the airport. He's flying back to Texas. Don't pick him up at the airport. We'll take care of it. And apparently on the phone, Carrie just started shrieking because again, she's like losing, losing him again, again. Yeah. She like had this hope rekindled and now it's gone. Mm. But when Frederick and the FBI arrived at the airport, Carrie was there, calm and smiling, to pick up her brother, Nicholas. Oh, no, Carrie. So, yeah, the FBI investigator was stunned. She called the U.S. Attorney's Office, who was like, just let Nicholas go home with her, I guess. And so they went home together. And So she was kind of on board of, like, you need a family. I want my brother back. I think so. I think think it was just like, let's just go back to how it was a few days ago yeah pretending um she says in an interview now that she doesn't remember it being certain that nicholas was a fraud oh okay and she basically says she saw what she wanted to see that her brother was home and she's Mm. like that's what i want to see and that's what we're gonna go with all right you know what whatever whatever you want girl you know it's like i'm not in a position to tell you you know So the FBI showed up to collect blood DNA samples from Nicholas and the rest of the family to, like, compare DNA. Apparently, Beverly, the mom, laid down on the floor, hostile, refusing to go anywhere, refusing to give up her DNA. And the FBI was like, this is getting weird. Something suspicious is happening. We feel weird about this. Yeah, what gives? They now felt a little bit suspicious that perhaps the family knew Frederick was a fraud, but they wanted him to be Nicholas because maybe they were hiding something about Nicholas's actual disappearance. Oh, shit. Which now in hindsight, like what a twist, because now it makes you want to second think, second guess every time, everything, Fucking all of the plot twist, all of the interactions so far, everything. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like, so <laughs> even when they got called forever ago yep. by the, a police station and a quote police officer said, I, you know, we have your son. They, sh- in theory, if I'm reading the room, they knew immediately it was not true. Could be. Well, then that makes so much sense. If that's true, that makes so much sense why they were willing to just like be accepting of any bullshit lie he told. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. They gave you eye drops and now your eyes are brown. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, you know? Yeah. yeah. If yeah. that's true, if they, I don't it's, know it's the rest very of the story much, yet. Yeah. It's very much just like one theory. So like, and it very well could not be that. And it could really just be everybody's trauma you know, playing on itself, which again, not my place to say it's not. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, we will definitely get into it because that is a major theory. So Beverly said in the uh, documentary, I really had no idea what I was thinking at that time. My main goal in life was not to think. She basically, she just wanted this to be her son, which. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Frederick at this point. <laughs> who's been like fooling everyone right now he's starting to feel weird and he's like hang on it's very obvious now that i'm not nicholas everyone's made this very clear right what are we doing here what are we doing here he's like we're all still playing along with this act 
they're still it's like the bullshitters now being bullshitted yes. and he's like yes and he's like wait a minute like we all know what's happening now right so like, he's what, like is what did i get myself into like i thought <laughs> i was fooling you and now i'm like wait what do you know you know they're outsmarting him in a way <laughs> yeah it's sort of weird it's like a plot twist on him and so he was like i feel like it's very obvious i'm not fucking nicholas and for some reason the family keeps playing along with this act he started thinking about carrie giving him the family photos back in spain and like playing along with his memory loss and it's a very jarring moment in the documentary because spoiler alert but he basically says like and then i realized they killed him and it was like oh it's like this like moment of like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and so he's like They must have killed him and they're playing along because they were just hoping that his presence would like cover it up. And if that were his feeling right away where he was like, I know that they killed him. Now you have like beyond walked yourself into a trap because if they were willing to kill their own (laughs) horrible family to join as like. If they were willing to kill their own son, then wow, you are not safe there. And but like you are also like just as in the doghouse uh, you forced in terms your of... way into the situation basically yeah. Uh, yeah. it's your own damn fault Weird. and like again i want to say like this is a fucking con artist saying this with no proof so i don't i don't want to make it sound like oh well he suddenly knew the truth like he he says this but he says a lot of things he also he says also says the eye drop thing yeah i was is, gonna say yeah. he also says his eyes turned brown from but an it eye is drop a, it is a if it is true, talk about a plot twist. Talk about a plot twist, really. Yeah. It talk about an SVU episode. I mean, I was gonna say talk about at least like something to consider if you're in a writing room right now. Because... Oh, absolutely. Like, no wonder Marishka was like, "We need to tone this down. It's too far. <laughs> We're going too far." She was probably like, "Get me to the writing room." Like, who on who, who on earth approved fuck this? Thought this was gonna be believable. So he basically thought maybe they're trying to just like cover this up by going along with my story and he specifically suspected jason the brother and beverly the mom sure i would too which kind of tracks because carrie seems to be the most just like desperate for her brother to come yes open-hearted just like vulnerable like really believing this you know and i i did talk about how i was gonna say i would also do that because i would also say it was the two of them because or at least the brother because in their own testimony like he was the last person to talk to him and it was basically a get yourself home we're not coming to pick you up yep so i just feel like if you're the last person and also that story i don't know but i'm i'm just playing detective right now without knowing all the information but that could have also been its own story of like oh he was at the skate park or playing basketball or something right he could have already been gone yeah right it could have just been like a fake story of like oh no he just disappeared playing basketball hmm Exactly. So it's a little bit shady. I do give him that. And so as far as Frederick's story goes, he thinks it was Jason and Beverly who were involved. And he said in an interview, some of them did it. Some of them knew of it. Some of them chose to ignore it. Yeah. That that was his angle. Well, especially because when you said like he came home and like saw the family for the first time, the brother just like up and left. Just was like, no, thank you. That also makes me think that the brother's I know I don't know who's I don't even know the rest of the story so I'm when I say he's guilty I don't actually I'm theorizing here folks but if if he were the one to do it it would make sense why he sees this man coming in pretending to be his 13 year old brother or 16 year old brother mm-hmm. and he's just like well I'm exiting I'm taking this myself out of this narrative. <laughs> yeah, like, this is not for me. Like, I know the truth and don't need to be here. And well, maybe he, other people know the truth. Wouldn't he want to, like, play along, though? Or not really, I guess. Oh, maybe. I don't... I, there's so many angles we could I take know. this story. It's like, how would you, it's like, how would you even know what anybody would do? I don't know. But it makes sense that he would probably be like, yeah, I just don't even want to know. Because yeah, I no, know you're much. right. I think that makes sense of like, what? Like literally showing up and being like, what the fuck is this? And probably looking at your mom, if that were the case, and being like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah. We know what happened. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so the FBI, they are getting more involved now. They show up with a warrant. They take Frederick's fingerprints. They send this to Interpol and the embassies. And at this point, Frederick's like, okay, they've got my fucking fingerprints the j- the gig the is up fuck jig. god 
It's like literally you can never say gif to save your life. It's but GIF. the time <laughs> Okay. But the time that like people are actually accepting of that sound coming out of your mouth. Is you it can't gig do or it. jig? <laughs> it's jig with Oh like, my god. Okay, the jig is up. The jiff every, is up. Everything you say is with a J. Jif is Jif. Jif. The jig is up. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. So the jig the jig is up and he's like <laughs> does it sound natural uh so he's like they took my fingerprints my fingerprints are in the fucking interpol system like they're gonna know who i am so he decides to meet with fucking parker pi fella oh okay he's been and like come clean tailing him yeah so in the interview it's so creepy apparently the the pi he, parker says you've done some things that upset your mom and uh Frederick says, we both know that's not my mom. <gasps> okay, well, at least we're now admitting it. Yeah, finally coming clean. Ugh. So basically just at this time, the FBI gets a call from Madrid, Spain, identifying Frederick as a serial imposter who was wanted for numerous charges, including posing as more than 500 different fraudulent identities. 500? 500. This guy's 23. You know, the f- okay, whoa, talk about... So that means his turnaround rate is not good. Like, he is... Right, only, good point. He's only pretending to be people for, like, 10 minutes at a time. <laughs> right, like, an afternoon. Like, right. What are you doing? So you would think after doing this 500 times, you'd have a better story than this eye drop nonsense, right? The, at least. And he really thought, like, I'm going to get caught again the if whole you're- time. If you have 500 identities under your belt, you better know a goddamn Texas accent, at least a Southern accent. Like, something. I, know, I think this was his first time out of Europe. He was like, wow, I'm going to the big uh, old US of A. Yeah, that makes sense. Got and it. To be fair, everyone in Texas was like, yeah, this sounds right. <laughs> like, All right. That's also fair. You know, that's also totally fair. It's so bizarre. Like, he really pulled it off somehow, shockingly. But wow. so, yeah, so, like, talk about reopening a wound. Like, now the family, Nicholas's family, like, presuming that they really are innocent and just had lost their son and wanted him to be back. They're losing him again. So yeah. they lost a child. Now they get him back only to find out it was, like, some sick joke, like a prank for mm-hmm. no reason. Just, like, a sick prank. And now Frederick was telling everybody, hey, you know what? I think they killed their son, Nicholas. So it's like, yeah. wow. So they're already like dealing with the blow of like, oh shit. Like poor Carrie is like, that's not my brother. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I think they murdered him. So, so maybe you already said this, but so now is he going to Charlie Parker PI so he can be like, um, here's another crass, uh, case to crack. Yep. Can you go see if they killed their kid? Yep. So weird that like now, like the villain has become the hero. No, it's true. And like, that's a big recurring theme that I had to keep reminding myself of, like, because, you know, we like to go down that rabbit hole, like maybe they did murder the kid. But then it's like, but our only source is like this right. fucking guy who's lied about literally everything and has not one shred of evidence. You were totally right. So it's sort of like, I just have to keep telling and myself. also like, what a, and I say hero, assuming that they actually did kill their son, but also like, we don't know that, right? Do we find no, that out no, at the no, end? No, no, Oh, okay. I thought this was all leading to like us finding no. that out. Okay, I take it's, back basically everything I said where I'm accusing I know, victims. It's, it's so easy to go down that path because it's like, oh, well, that would explain some of the behavior. But then it's like, but wait, yeah. wait, wait. The starting point of this is like this fucking serial liar con wow. artist. At this whole, this, for some reason in my mind, I had primed myself into like one, there's only one way this story ends. No, it's and true. Like, and it did that in the show too. I remember watching and going like, oh my God. It makes sense. Oh, well, sense. then I apologize. I did not mean to do that. Wow. No, but it's it's sort hmm. of hard. It's like it's like he really put this in everyone's head to the point that the FBI were like, okay, we're going to investigate this as a homicide. Like, he literally... Man, he manipulated me. Yeah, I wasn't even yes, there. Yes, yes, me too. And so, basically, they decide to open a homicide investigation against nicholas's family oh now it feels so much more fucked up it's wow. so twisted and so the pi gets permission to dig for nicholas's body in the yard at the family's former residence where nicholas had gone missing oh. and he believed that he believed that nicholas's body was buried in this yard spoiler alert they don't find it uh but he also believes that jason 
remember when he called in that uh like oh my brother's trying to break into our house Mm -hmm. when he was like missing he believes that jason just did that to make it seem like nicholas was still alive even though he Mm. knew he wasn't you're right okay all very like circumstance like not even circumstantial just like anecdotal like that's what he thinks so the fbi became convinced that okay this is where i take issue too the fbi became convinced that no family would have fallen for frederick's act no matter how desperate they were but i'm like but you fell for it the fbi I, fell for it we fell for it for a second there yeah but like if the fucking fbi is like oh no, that's definitely the same person. How can you blame like this family? It's Mm. just so ridiculous that they're like, oh, well, the family was tricked, so they must have murdered their son. It's like, well, you fucking didn't know. Man. You told them it was him. You're the ones that called and said, guess what? It just Mm. pisses me off that they're like using this against them now. And it's like, you're the ones who started this. You're the ones who believed it from the start. You're the one who heard the story about the eye drops and were like, mm-hmm, yep, that tracks. You know, like <laughs> that, what the that fuck? part I never fell for. <laughs> That's the part <laughs> where it's like, wait, what? The FBI yeah. was still on board after that. And it pisses me off that now they're like, oh, well, they didn't figure it out. So they must be murderers. And it's like, hold on. Jeez. Okay. So by that logic, like, it's, just, I don't know, it just ticks me off. So, It's very sad, too, because Carrie, the sister, uh, remembers being, like, totally devastated and heartbroken when she first kind of had to accept that Frederick wasn't Nicholas. And she was angry at herself. And she said, how could I be so fucking stupid? I mean, seriously. Like, she's just, like, so devastated in herself. Carrie, the sister. Oh, God. Which just is so sad because no matter what happened, I, I really don't get the feeling... I, I just get the feeling she genuinely just wanted this to be her brother. Especially, like, I feel like if she found out for the second time that this isn't your brother and then that, yeah. like, shriek came out, oh. I, that sounds just like a guttural human. Just horrible. Uh, just, like, like something that can't be replicated. Like an innate, faked. horrible yeah. reaction. Exactly. I had that same yeah. thought. So they decided to submit Beverly, the mom, to a polygraph test about Nicholas's disappearance. She passed the test twice with flying colors. But then they made her take it a third time and she failed it. And it's sort of like, well, she passed the first two times. You can't just be like, and they're like, right. well, the third time she failed it. And it's like, well, but she passed the first. Right, right, and right. I don't see how that, uh, I don't think that's like f- a fair shake. But um, she also said in the interview that she lied in that interview about having stolen something. And she thinks that's why she failed. Yeah, because oh, she lied oh. about like a crime that she had committed, oh, and she thinks okay. it came up as like she was lying. If that makes hmm. sense. But so anyway, she said in an interview, "I've been crazy, but never violent." And Carrie was just beyond the sister was beyond outrage that Frederick would put her family through this like specific version of hell after yeah. already putting them through a very specific and fucked up hell. <laughs> And so, as she pointed out, the story of using Frederick to cover up Nicholas's murder didn't really make sense because police, like I said, had never cared that much about Nicholas's disappearance. Right. So, like, they didn't need to cover it up because police didn't really give a shit. Like, they Mm -hmm. were like, he ran away, whatever. From beginning to end, the police are kind of (laughs) shocking me, but also not. (laughs) But Shocking, yeah. Yeah, but I'm just like, oh, wow, like, uh, the bar is pretty low. The bar is pretty low. And, like, it does make a good point. Like, why would we try so dramatically to cover up his murder if nobody was even looking into it? But my devil's advocate of that is, but what would it look like if you got a call being like, we found Nicholas, and then you're like, oh, no, you didn't. You couldn't have. Right. Because he's dead. (laughs) Like, you know, it's sort of like, maybe you had to play along because, like, you can't be like you would have gotten caught yourself yeah, yeah you can't be like well i know it's not him well how do you know because he's buried in the backyard like uh. I, so part of me is like i i get the argument but i'm also like devil's advocate it's not I necessarily a foolproof argument to me I, i'm not saying that i believe that they did anything but i just think it's i don't know worth pointing out so meanwhile in jail for some reason 
this is where I'm this is where I get into the part about like the no remorse when you ask like do you think he well now after hearing all of this I I know my answer I okay think. good because there's also more which is oh my god in jail Frederick for some fucking reason had unfettered access to a phone shut the fuck up like that's Just how this like, whole thing started. Exactly. Exactly. And so he uses his phone to make hundreds of collect calls. Oh, my God. Um, it's horrible. To families of missing children claiming he had information on their children's whereabouts. <gasps> and was he planning on then? No, he just trying wanted to, to be. Nah, just, just to fuck around for, with them. Just for fun. That's like a like a cat and a mouse situation. Just like. Just like twisted just wanting to torture them yes yes and his mo was always like impersonating endangered minors that was like his thing um and he'd often stayed in children's homes as like a runaway or a victim throughout the years and basically he was just doing all of that for like emotional gratification he wanted to like be cared for like an endangered child but so then calling all these hundreds of families to just be like i know where your child is like, that was just its own brand of fucked up. I don't want to say it feels... It doesn't feel sicker. It feels... I don't know. I think I think because the first half of the story started with me actually thinking, like, oh, he just wanted a home, and mm-hmm. he was just really hoping, like, people And it would... went too far, maybe. Yeah, that's what I think I was hoping, this st- how the mm-hmm. story would go, versus, like, oh, he's a, a, an... I, well, he was still what he did was still a, a monsterful to, to yeah. these people, but like it was in my mind, I was hoping that the drive was just coming from desperation. But now it just like reminds you all over again that all of it was just maybe yeah. just to fuck with people. Well, and not to use our favorite word, but it almost seems like very wanton. Just like mm-hmm. fuck it, I'm in jail. Why don't I just fucking wreak some havoc and like yeah. call yeah. some people and. Just rile them up in the worst possible way and get their hopes Uh, up and then let it come crashing down just because I have that power and they let me use a phone. It's like just so sinister. Yes, it's so sinister and just so like almost random. Like, yeah, you're right. There's no like reason behind it. It's not like he's like, oh, well, I'm seeking some sort of safety or something. It's just like, why not fuck around with the most vulnerable hurt people why not yeah and he did and it's just like that goes to show like wow okay so this guy really just and that's when my brain kind of goes okay so the thought of like him being the sole source of the sole source telling the fbi that this family killed their son is like all right how much water Mm -hmm. does this argument hold because he's the only one who has claimed this and he has no proof yeah. But he's just so manipulative that the FBI believed him. It's it's disturbing. I mean Wow, I feel like even I got tricked a bunch of times. I think I just feel like I thought the story was going in different directions and so then I was primed to react certain no, ways. No, it's true. And- Blaze and I were watching it last night and Blaze was like, Oh my god, they they killed their son, didn't they? And I was like, What? And like I had watched this, but it's been like six, seven years. And I was like, Wait, oh my god. And then literally he goes, Then I realized they killed Nicholas. And I went, oh, my God, they killed him? And then, like, 10 minutes later, I was like, wait, why did I just believe that guy? He just told yeah, me that's how I feel everything whole- he said was fake. Like, Yeah, that was really, that makes me feel, like, gross that I fell for it yeah. so easily. But then it makes me, like, well, then I'm sure that's how every single that's person how in this story must have felt. felt. And, like, it must just be so, like, not only, and embarrassing sounds like, obviously, not a strong enough word, but just, like, to be the family and to be, like, shit we just wanted to believe this so badly and now we've yeah. been made fools of by this guy who's just laughing about this and like i mean it must just be the worst feeling on top of the heartbreak of losing your son it's just mm. it's so sick so ultimately frederick was charged with perjury and obtaining a passport illegally he was sentenced to six years in prison he was deported to france in 2003 and three months later after being deported to france he attempted to steal the identity of a missing 14 year old Uh, great so nothing's changed nothing's changed nothing's changed as of the airing of the imposter which is the documentary i've been referencing for the most part uh, which came out in 2012 frederick uh, the last we know was married and living in france with three children so that's great (laughs) 
So he convinced someone to fall in love with him. That's for sure. He convinced someone at least to procreate. I don't know about yeah. love, but okay, at least fair enough. they've procreated. So hopefully some of his, hopefully the genes came from the mom. We'll hope. Yeah. Uh, eventually, with absolutely zero evidence backing his allegations against Nicholas's family, the homicide investigation was closed. So Nicholas's alleged murderer, Jason, the older brother, and I say alleged murderer with huge grain of salt, a mountain of salt, because this is literally coming from a compulsive liar who Mm -hmm. has admitted to making everything up. So his alleged murderer, the older brother, um, had previously gone through rehab and become clean, but he tragically relapsed and overdosed shortly after Frederick was arrested. Uh, Well, to be fair, I feel like... Anything like that story we just heard surely would uh, be something to uh, make someone spiral. It's not going to or... help your no. mental health. Exactly. It's not going to help. If you might have already been like hurting that Vulnerable. day. Vulnerable. Absolutely. This whole thing happened. Yeah. I. What a shame. But What a fucking shame. It really is. It's just like why like their lives were already in shambles losing their son. And then it's like you just blew it up some more, you know, Mm -hmm. just for your own fucking fun. And Carrie, the sister, uh, regrets in an interview that now Jason isn't even alive to defend himself against all these accusations that he murdered his brother. Um, But oh, yeah, Frederick and the P.I. continue to make these allegations against Jason and his family. And for what it's worth, they show the P.I. digging in the backyard and they don't find anything. So that lead didn't go Mm. anywhere. Uh, In the end, you know, it's very possible. I mean, we've talked on the show about like the power of our brains just telling us things and like tricking us and being able to believe something you want to believe just for the sake of like fitting the right puzzle piece or like easing your pain. And so, yeah, it is really possible that the, the power of grief and like the, the hope that they were holding on to blinded the family to the truth. And they just really wanted this to be true that they had their son back and that after such a long nightmare, like they could, go back to being a happy family and i don't think that's unlikely at all i really i really don't i feel like all the pieces just kind of aligned for them to just say okay the fbi says it's him he has the same tattoos and honestly fair enough it's a wacky phenomena but you know what clearly clearly it's uh not impossible no i totally agree and like I know we say this a lot, but like, I don't feel like I have a place to say, like, I wouldn't, I would know, you know, like, yeah, I like to think I would know, but clearly like this story has proven me wrong. Like I, 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 w- I would have gone into this and I did go into this saying like, I feel like I would, I would know, but I'm yeah, fucking clearly not. Like, maybe not. Yeah. What a- Especially with like a kid who's changing over several years and like, mm-hmm. and also why would anyone do this? Like, I feel like your thought would be like, well, why would anyone fake tattoos and like? Yeah, like that's a that's a good theory if it made any sense at all. Yeah, but it's it, like for what, <laughs> like to yeah. what end, you know? And it's just like, oh, to the end of I don't know. I just felt like it, which is like so mm. twisted. So unfortunately, um, as far as we know, Nicholas is still missing. There are no leads. Um, his family can just hope that one day maybe they will have actual, true, concrete answers. But for now. Oof. That's the story. And I'm going to actually send you, um, we can also post this. I'm going to send you a picture of what he looked like. Yeah. Like the side by side. I almost sent it to the group chat. And then I was like, Eva's on vacation. She's going to be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> She's going to be like, well, they're still recording. Yeah. Well, they're doing some bullshit over there. I mean, not at all does he look 16. But I guess there are enough features where if he dyed his hair. Right. It's I. But also, I will say the black and white photo of him is is like not in character. It's like not in character, like because he really tried, like he dyed his hair blonde. He wore like scarves and hats and sunglasses like he Hmm. kind of tried. But I feel like they'd look like. I could see them passing as siblings with a massive age gap, but they are yeah. not the same person. No, exactly. but that's also like with 
fresh eyes without any emotional attachment to the family and like and like the full story yeah yeah and like the con yeah so i could if i were their sibling desperate for my brother back exactly and you know i was i was just desperate 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 uh i mean i don't i don't know it's it's obviously possible to to believe it so and it, they don't look wildly different if the color like the hair color and eye color exactly changed. i think like if you covered up i'm gonna send you another one like it's I've, it the worst thing like i mean it just the age it's not I think so much that's the, the, the co- most jarring part yeah it's not so much the coloring as it is the age that's the yeah, problem yeah oh i see it now okay hmm it's uh, like maybe if you're desperate enough definitely He's kind of like a chameleon. Like, I think he really tried. And, like, these pictures are not... That one, I think, is more him pretending. But, like, that first picture, like, that's not him pretending at all. That's, like, him right. as himself. I think if he had, you know, dyed his hair and put on sunglasses and spoke really softly and pretended to be a child, like, maybe that would kind of check those yeah. boxes. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I obviously I shouldn't be the one to be able to say anything. Clearly, it if I think if you're desperate enough to have a loved one back in your life, you could get your brain to believe anything. So yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just sad. It's just like this shouldn't have even been. Shouldn't have happened. Mm-mm. Wow, anyway. talk about a roller coaster, right? It's like what the f- left and right and all over the place, man. Well done, Christine. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for going on this journey with me, Em. Yeah, I just, I, I feel a, a little tricked and a little mad that I was able to get That's tricked. That's the thing. It's like, it's like, so it like disarms you and then you're like, well, shit. Like, I didn't, I didn't mean to fall for that. I don't know. Boy, well. But yeah, if you guys want to watch it, it's called The Imposter. Um, it's currently on Amazon Prime, but it's very annoying because at least when I watch it, it's like every half hour it's sort of like a new chanel perfume and i'm like (laughs) whoa i'm talking about a child's potential disappearance and murder so there are ads which as someone who like (laughs) only watches like discovery plus and hulu now without ads i'm like what the fuck is this who's screaming in my computer (laughs) uh but yeah so it is on amazon prime for free cool Um, and it's I highly recommend it. It's very creepy to watch him tell the story. Yeah, I bet. It's like very jarring. Um so Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna stick with my laundry SVU, if you don't <laughs> mind. Um that yeah, or you could watch there. the remake. Dun dun. And, I'd rather uh, see Marishka just handle it for me and solve it and also everyone's happy at the end of the happy day. Happy so. ending, check, check, check. And yeah, also yeah, yeah. like at the beginning, they even tell you like this is all fictional. None of yeah. it's real. And you're like right okay i love that i love I'm like, that why I, do you insist on that so heavily <laughs> sometimes i wish our podcast was us just telling completely fake crimes actually just let's kidding. just completely rip off law and order and just just ride with what they're doing JK. it right they have made it this long for a reason so clearly oh well thank you christine i'm gonna actually go finish off the last lo- episode of Law and Order. Yay! Well, I'm very we, excited. I think we need to do a five minute uh, aftermath. Unfortunately, yeah, 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 I think so too. Um, for your, unfortunately, for your TV binge, I, I you have you. to talk to me for five more minutes. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. But it's uh, it's on Patreon. If you guys want, to, for some god awful reason, want to hear us keep talking, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash, and that's why we drink and. Uh, we do little after chats after the episodes where we just kind of bleh, word vomit at each other. Um, and it's a good time. <laughs> I'm going to pour another glass of wine and we're going to go do that now. Yeah. All right. See you over there in the after chats. In our, the, uh, it, 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 whatever. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try it again in a minute. <laughs> and that's why we drink. <laughs>